You're watching Sci-Fi Saturday. Discussion and analysis of all your favorite sci-fi TV shows. Only on the Anthony James YouTube channel. Well, I was right. We've only just begun. So chapter 15 of The Mandalorian was just as action-packed as the two previous. Absolutely love this episode, as I'm sure you can imagine, guys. Before we get into it, though, could you please subscribe to the channel, like the video, all those sorts of things help me. If you want to see me reviewing TV shows more often, the subscribe button is probably the best way to do that. Ring the bell as well so you get a notification every single time I upload. All right, guys, so this episode, first of all, what was I talking about? I'm right, I'm right. Okay, what am I right about? Well, I said, and I didn't expect it to be the next episode, but I said that I thought that Mando was going to have to remove his helmet to do something to get the child back or to help the child. Now, it didn't quite happen the way I thought it would. I think I, the way I explained it was sort of like that he had to go out and fight and shoot and like sort of, sort of go into go through the, through a battle with his helmet off to do it. Now, it was much more subtle than that, actually. What it was that he needed to take his helmet off to get a facial scan, and there was no there was no shooting or anything going on just yet. There was eventually, but it wasn't the sort of thing I was, I was uh, thinking of. But the, the way it happened and the way it had to happen was exactly what I meant. Again, I didn't think it was going to happen next episode, but I, I, I think we could all agree it was trending that way. This show has always been trending since we found out that... Uh, since we found out that he was in some sort of cult, um, then we, we, we always knew that it's eventually going to lead to him having this helmet off more. He's going to slowly come away from it. Now that he sees that nothing bad happened, that he had his helmet off uh, to save the child, he, he'll start coming around to it a bit more. And I do expect that by the end of the show, uh, Pedro Pascal, uh, the Mandalorian, will be taking his helmet off more often like Boba Fett does so far, where he takes his helmet off and he talks to people with his helmet off, I think the Mandalorian will eventually, and like Bo-Katan did too, I think eventually he'll get to that stage. That's what I think. Overall, this episode, I thought it was fantastic. I, I like the idea of going undercover. It was interesting, the idea of uh, questioning the Mandalorian's beliefs when he took his helmet off and put on the Stormtrooper helmet, and it was thinking to himself, well, and the Bill Burr's character... Um, Mayfield did a great job of like questioning him there, saying, "Hang on, so what's the rule? Is the rule that you can't show your face, or is the rule that you have to, you can't remove your helmet?" And that was really—it's a great way to get questioning into that character. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I thought Bill Burr did a fantastic job in this uh, in this episode. Um, I mean, there was there was the the occasional Bill Burr esque joke where he's you know he's, he's that's his character. He's a grumpy old man who sort of makes jokes about broads and stuff. Um, I am a fan of Bill Burr. I will say, um, obviously. You know, uh, he he's his comedy is 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 the type that he is trying to offend uh, certain in certain regards. Sometimes people get offended at what he says, and I'm not I'm not sure they really should. But I think a lot of the time when he does offend in, in big quotation marks, because Bill Burr is someone who genuinely does avoid controversy. But when he does offend, I think that that's his intention. He he is he's putting he is being the character of the grumpy old man. Um, so basically, Bill Burr. Did a great job of, of really making this character empathetic by the end. Um, I think that he, the questions that he was putting to Mando, really is gonna they're gonna stay with Mando and and his and the fact that he sort of really is against the Empire now. Like he blew up the Rubidium at the end. Um, he killed the, uh, the his superior his old superior officer. I think that's all gonna stay with Mando, and he's gonna realize that actually people can change their stripes, and that's the thing. That's what Mando needed to see. He needs to see that someone's ideology doesn't have to stay with them their whole life. And that's what Bill Burr's character gave Mando. Um, now, there's a few things I want to talk about. Obviously, uh, before I sort of skip on to my overall analysis, the, the, I'll, I'll mention a few things. I love the I love uh, Fennec as the as a sniper. I love the idea of having a sniper in Star Wars, like a real you know quick shot. Uh, really, really cool. I like that sort of there was a bit of a dueling thing going on between uh, Cara Dune and Fennec in this episode, where they were both like you know I thought they were going to get much more competitive with it, but actually they were very respectful the whole time. I thought they were going to start like a little game of you know I'll I'll try and get him, I'll try and get him, but actually no, very um, very very good teamwork going on with those two. Um, I thought it was. Uh, I thought the, the the car chase scene or the, the the scene where they had the rubidium and there was like the real tension in 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 the uh, in that element of the show where like the the little levels were going up to red and down to green. That was a great way of in introducing tension into it, and the way that they flipped the script. So all of these locals coming. It was a bit Mad Max, you know, like these pirates coming and trying to take the uh, like the blow up the rubidium. It was so interesting 
the way this show flipped it all and made us root for the stormtroopers and the tie fighters the tie fighters came to the rescue and the stormtroopers came to the rescue and we me myself i really really felt like a rush as if like it was the x-wings come in like i i felt a rush of like you know satis like you know it was sort of relief at seeing the bad guys it's so strange and it's so well done the way they were able to make us feel that sense of relief from seeing the bad guys it's it was really clever and it was really it's sort of a great way to play with the audience's mind and it really works because Bill Burr's character uh, Mayfield goes on to question the Mandalorian about about um you know the meaning of war I suppose and isn't every side the same and as long as we can get up in the morning go to bed at night shouldn't we all just you know be one big people and this made me start thinking and it's interesting to see that this has got this episode's really got nothing but positive reviews about it on the internet and I as I say I'm giving it a positive review too I absolutely loved it but I will say when the last Jedi came out that was one of the things that everyone hated. Most people hated. The Canto Bite storyline, when they were tr starting to bring in the idea that, um, that there, there, was, there was... They started to bring in the idea that war on, it, on either side isn't a good thing. And they started trying to bring in the idea of, you know, you know well, these ships have to be made by someone and like your, your people kill people. And they started bringing in like, the morality of war into Star Wars The Last Jedi. And a lot of people were like, this is Star Wars. Like, just don't bring that those moral questions in. It's just to be, meant to be about a big space western, a big sort of adventure in space. Now, that was an interesting take, I felt. I didn't... I personally understand the gripes with the Canto Bite storyline in The Last Jedi, how it sort of was a bit separate, felt very different. Ne not necessarily... It didn't necessarily fit the movie. Um... I, I understand all of that. I do, I, 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 and I and I get those those uh, those things. But I find it interesting that the same moral point put across in the Mandalorian is being applauded. Um, to me, Dave Filoni seems to have and John Favreau have have seemed to put themselves on a mission to uh, to make the world eat their takes on the Last Jedi. So, for example, Canto Bite is the first one. So, Canto Bite, uh, ever and now, the, the the whole moral of that storyline. Uh, everyone agrees with now because of the way the uh, Mayfield put it across, um, and and they sort of it's starting to really under make sense in terms of the Mandalorian's personal growth. The second one is is that Star Wars usually has a, a main character who is is from a lineage of heroes or from a lineage of Jedi or something like that. Like they have they have a history. It's all about families, but the Mandalorian is about Mando Din Djarin, who is no one. Like he's not, he's not. His family hasn't been involved in it for generations. He is, he is the main character, first main character in Star Wars, who is no one really, um, in in the main 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 sort of thrust main TV shows and films anyway. But that's interesting because everyone, a lot of people had a, a outrage at Rey being no one at the end of the Last Jedi. I personally think she should have stayed no one, but I understand that you know I, I understand how it's all fitting into the canon now, but. So they've decided to have a hero that was no one, and they're going to stick to that. Unless they don't, but that's what it seems like. The third thing that, that, that they seem to be bringing in from The Last Jedi in, in, in order to, like, you know, sort of make people eat their takes about it is the, is the, is the sea, like the Jedi stone. So that in, in The Last Jedi, we saw, we saw Luke projecting himself across the galaxy on a stone, and now we see, um, see Baby Yoda doing it. Grogu did it in Episode 6. And the last one, which I was going to say, is one of the biggest, biggest gripes of The Last Jedi was the fact that Snoke got killed and then there was no real backstory. Everyone was sort of like, well, where did he come from? What was he? Well, this, this Mandalorian show seems to be trying to address that too through the cloning uh, storyline. So this, sh <laughs> this show is, depending on which way you look at, it, look at it, it's either trying to say, no, everything that was happening in The Last Jedi was actually really good stuff and we want to build on that. Or it's saying, you know, and equally equally valid, I think, both of these. The second one would be, okay, The Last Jedi, you know, had some really good themes, but maybe they weren't executed in the way that the fans wanted them to be. So we're going to use The Mandalorian to build upon those themes and give them more depth and more uh, gravitas so that whenever people watch The Last Jedi again, it's more fulfilling. Perhaps, perhaps that's the way they're doing it. But I just find it really interesting that... One of the most popular TV shows uh, and one of the most popular Star Wars things in the last few decades 
is actually drawing upon one of the most divisive films in the Star Wars uh, universe for decades. I find that really interesting that they are just sort of they could have it would have been very easy just to ignore the sequel trilogy and i think some people think that they are but then they're definitely not they are bridging the gap between the originals and the sequel very very seamlessly seamlessly in my opinion and i think it shows that in the future we shouldn't judge uh star wars um sort of in terms of the backstories and stuff and like sort of how things fit together if the story is good if the characters are good in the film then we should we should we should treat it as a film as a, as a standalone film and and sort of have faith that they are going to fill in all of the little unanswered questions later on. Now, I'm sure there are people who think we shouldn't need that. We shouldn't need extra bits and pieces to fill in for a film. I, I somewhat agree with you. I somewhat agree with you. Um, and I'm going to just take go on out on a limb and say I like The Last Jedi. I like that film. I know uh, even like the, the throne room scene, which I personally, when I saw it in the cinema, really loved. If we're going to slow it down, go piece by piece, yeah, what's that guy doing? He's spinning around. What's that person doing waiting for their turn to get hit? I get all that. But for me, I thought it, I enjoyed the ride and I enjoyed the way, it, like, the way it was going. Having said that, The Mandalorian is adding so much depth to that. I'm so interested to see where the cloning storyline's going. Really, really interested to see. This episode was really cool. It was, it was every episode just is getting better. Like, and I don't necessarily think every episode is getting better, like, in terms of the quality. But, but I think what's happening is because each episode is just as good as the last, you have this feeling of, like, this show can do no wrong. Like, it's just, it's incredible. I, yeah, I don't have much more to say about this episode because it's just, I just loved it so much. Um, it was so, so interesting, like, the way, the way they were able to flip the script, as I say, that's what I want to take out of this review for this episode, is just that how, how, impressive, how impressive it was and how impressed I am at the, the way that they were able to flip the script and have me, even for a split, split second, being relieved and rooting for stormtroopers and TIE fighters. Absolutely amazing. Now, I know every, everyone else on uh, YouTube is talking about the, the pulse bomb or whatever that was, which came out of the back of Boba Fett's. Okay, I'll leave that, I'll leave that to those guys. Um, I thought that was really cool. I, but having said that, guys, I'm, I'm not going to claim that I know exactly the particular episode or comic or whatever where that came from, okay? Tell me in the comments, actually, because I would like to know. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Next week, it's the finale. The Mandalorian finale of the season, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um can't wait i really can't wait i'm sure you can't wait either make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to hear my thoughts on that next week and also could you like the video it really does help thanks very much guys i'll see you later you're watching sci-fi saturday discussion and analysis of all your favorite sci-fi tv shows only on the anthony james youtube channel